Okay, so I'm an old curmudgeon, and I've been complaining about some things in pinball, and today we got the preview, a little bit of a preview of the gameplay of uh, Labyrinth Pinball from the new pinball company, Barrels of Fun. Um, I don't know, a name will probably grow on me. It's certainly not as bad as Haggis, so. But Labyrinth Pinball is promising for a few reasons. All right, let's just get the price out of the way. It's going to be 10600 I think it's a good price for what you're getting compared to other companies out there. I'm not going to name any names. But one of the things that's kind of made me uh, worried over the last few years is we're getting pinball machines with less and less mechs and just cool stuff in them. They're getting a little bit sterile. Like, I find, like, a lot of, like, one of the sins I've been seeing, like, on some of the sterns has been, like, some ramps that aren't, like, very creative or anything. They just have, like, a... 180 right back at you or maybe a few curves and stuff in them but um this has some cool stuff going on with it and i have everything written down on my phone here so i can you know kind of remind myself because old okay cabinet looks like it is a spooky style cabinet or stern so it's got that screen on the bottom with the that's the thing i'm wondering is this like i would hope for the price that this is back glass with like silk screened art on it or something like that and not like a translight if it was a translate, I, I, you know, I'm just, I think at a certain price point, it should be actual glass with art on it. The art on the cabinet looks awesome. <laughs> it really does. Uh, it fits the theme of the table very well. I really like how the speaker grills, which are light up in RGB, by the way, have this like little grill over them that looks like, you know, like a labyrinth or a maze, you know, kind of set in it. And so that's pretty creative. The playfield art itself fits very well for the theme and everything. And you've got like seemingly like the information you want there. So you got your six mode lights and you got like a multi ball and then the actual final wizard mode there. So, okay, there's like this like a little tower thing. There's the knockers in the back. There's that wizard guy. I can't remember. I haven't seen a movie in years. And all those seem to be actual molds and not 3D printed parts. So, good job. Just looking at this in the video, it seemed like it was an early on. Uh, test model or something there were no stickers on really any of the targets there was no stickers on the drops and there was no stickers on the spinner so seems like some things are still in the works here some of the jersey jack stuff does this scooby-doo did this with like a little scooby-doo mech on the side but this is something that i feel is missing in pinball and i'm glad to see that they have quite a bit of it here is mechs for just character action so you have like the little worm guy popping up you have like a head, i think maybe a head or heads popping out of the apron you got like a guy coming out of like the little tower and stuff like that so i like that because in my mind pinball it's a kinetic thing it's not just about something happening to the ball but when you hit something Maybe have something pop up or something like that. It's kind of like a shooting gallery. You kind of want that a little bit. Okay, first thing off, <laughs> I just want to say about this. I love some of the things I saw with how this game shoots. So skill shot seems to be sort of like there's a part of like the habit trail. So it comes up on like a wire form and then it's just like missing underneath. And then that you go down in there for like a skill shot. I like that. It's sort of like the way Toy Story does it, but it's like on a flat straight ahead instead of like on a turn or something like that as far as ramps i love these ramps because like one of my big gripes in like the last few years has been ramps like have just become sterile they're not a whole lot of them aren't really really fun to shoot or anything and when i talk to people that design these things they're like well we want to speed up the ramps because we don't want the uh, player to wait for the ball to return and i get that and these ramps don't seem overly slow, but they're fun. There's one that's got like a little corkscrew in the in the wire form. There's another one that's got like just like a little, you know, 180 kind of spin that it does until it actually goes down into the uh, into the end lane. And it's one of the things I like about Foo Fighters. I think some of the wire form stuff that he did in that with uh, Jack Danger did in his game was fun. I like that one that you shoot and it just kind of comes back down and stuff. Deadpool had a good one, but by and large we're getting like a lot of ramps that shoot into like 180s and pretty much just straight come back and i find that boring as hell one of the things i thought was the biggest sin of the newest elvira house of horrors is if you look at um party monsters and you look at scared stiff they had really cool ramps norman's not known for that if you actually look at galactic tank force the wire forms are pretty funky on that for some reason 
on House of Horrors, they're, they're just shoot up and just go straight back. There's cool things going on there with like the trunk lock and all that, but they're just kind of plain. And to me, that just kind of signals that this company knows where some of the fun and modern pinball is missing, and they're trying to institute that back in. And I, I applaud them for it because. Um, I've missed some of these things. You got two scoops, one with a drop target in front of it. There's a very innovative post save on the left outlane that just pops up out of the play field. It's not like Foo Fighters where it's like, you know, knocks the ball back up into the flippers. It just diverts the ball towards the end lane. So that's a pretty cool save. I would love to see a kickback though. I, I miss kickback so much. There's an actual curved ball guide that pops up and sinks down into the table so the ball can divert different ways that's pretty cool and that's that's understandable in a game called labyrinth there's also another one that i saw in that where they show that popping up and the ball diverting and there's actually a drop target turned backwards to act as a diverter i can't say i've seen that before right in front of the spinner there seems to be a ball fork that pops up that holds the ball there for like a kinetic kit and i think it's pretty neat that it's like right in front of a spinner so i'm curious if like behind a spinner there's like anything blocking it back there and so you could just like repeatedly hit that up against the spinner or whatnot oh yeah one of the ramps actually pops up the shoot the ball out and i would assume possibly shoot the ball in so that's pretty neat the upper right flipper has an under the flipper shot, so you can shoot underneath, under there, it goes down like a little trail, and then there's a post there to stop it. So I don't know if it's going to be like a physical ball lock or what's going on there. In the back panel, they have a ultra-wide screen that is for animations, but also giving you information. Now, like I said, I would rather have inserts over you know, a screen somewhere. I think it's just much more useful to look at inserts personally, but that's not bad like i really like that in circus voltaire where they had the dmd back there so you know if it works it works and go for it uh it's certainly better than having to look up at the screen all the time to and losing track of what's going on so so it sounds like we have uh some really good call outs in here from bowie we have bowie's likeness on the machine we have all of the puppets from the movie and we have uh, five songs from the movie that I think all the songs were Bowie songs, but I'm not sure on that. One of, one of the weird tidbits that I actually think is pretty neat about Labyrinth is some of the coordination and things that's going on in the movie. Choreography, that's what I'm looking for. Like the dance choreography specifically. Did you guys know that Gates McFadden that played Beverly Crusher and Next Generation was actually the dance choreographer for this movie? I didn't know that until like a couple of years ago. I thought that was sweet. Even though it looks like we don't have Sarah's character in the uh, game itself, I don't think that's going to matter a whole lot. I think we got enough assets between Bowie and the music and all the puppets and stuff like that that we have a pretty good game here. We've got some accessories. So we've got a topper at $1,000, which when you look at it, it really makes the uh, Godzilla topper kind of... Yeah, or pretty much any stern topper for that case. We have a shooter rod. I don't know what that is. I think they said it's called Nippers. I don't remember that in the movie. It's been years since I've seen this thing. But apparently they set on top of a spear, so it kind of makes sense that they're on a uh, shooting rod. But man, that thing's bulky. And as somebody that's owned the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles katana shooter rod, nah. The alternate back glass, they said it's mirrored. I watched that video multiple times. I can't see the mirroring on it anywhere. anywhere. So somebody's going to have to point out to me where the mirroring is on that glass. It looks cool. and I don't really know what the price of that one is yet. So Me personally, with the way that the machine looks and how stacked it is with like all the mechs and stuff in it, and it's got like interior art blades and all that stuff for the base price, I think it's a pretty killer machine right out the bat. So I wouldn't really have any kind of need to modify my machine if I ended up getting one of these. And so I think having a title like this, a license like this, and it going for a new company, I think they're going to do very well. And I'm glad because they're also going to introduce competition into the whole, you know, the whole industry, but also like put some pressure on some of these companies. Because like if you look at Labyrinth and you look at all the mechs and things that you're getting for just a little bit more than a stern premium, you're probably going to look at it and be like, hmm. So... Labyrinth is probably not going to set the world on fire, but it'll probably do pretty well for them for their first pin. So I'm glad to see Barrels of Fun is joining the uh, industry. And I, the only thing I have to say is just like the things I did see on it, 
as far as like the animations and stuff like that looked pretty good so far so um, a lot of it just seemed like it was like clips redone and all that but there was like a couple like original animations that i did get to see in the video so good job guys I stopped working on a video for this, so I'm going to go back to work. Hopefully, that'll be out by Sunday or Monday morning. Um, I'm trying to rush right now because my computer actually needs to go in for repair, and it's got to leave on Monday morning. So, anyways, see you guys in the next video, and yeah, I don't have any like cool taglines or anything like that to sign out with. Later.